Good morning. It is uh, Thursday morning and I'm actually working today. So I'm going to have some time here online to read uh, with you before I start at 9. And um, I wanted to um, let you know about something that I'm going to be doing after we're done in the book of Revelation. Uh, after, well, you're joining me in my devotional time and my next um, devotion I'm going to be doing, so this is chapter 20 today um, in Revelation. There's only about three more chapters left, so today's Thursday. Friday we'll do the 21st. Saturday we'll do the 22nd. And then it's, it's done. And um, rather than, um, hi everybody, hi Gail, hi Melissa. How's San Diego? Are you guys getting some rain? Um, I th heard that it was raining down there after we got the rain. It must have moved down your way. Anyway, um, some of you may or may not know about the Passion Translation, which I've been reading from the New International Version this whole time, which I love. I love my study Bible. I love all these notes. Hi, Lisa. And I love that, um, yeah, that we've been able to go through. We started a couple months ago, and I think we started in, let me see, what was it that we started in? It wasn't James. It was right after James. Hebrews, James. Hi. It was First Peter. Yeah, we started in First Peter. So we did the Peter books, the John books, Jude, and now Revelation. So we kind of scooped up the last part of the Bible, and then um, we're going to go to the Old Testament starting in about three days. And I wanted to show you the Passion Translation. Um, it's not completed yet, but this is the latest book that's been translated, and it's the book of Isaiah. Da 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 da! And, <laughs> oh, you got rain on Christmas, but now it's cooler. Okay, that's good to know. Well, I hope you're doing well, Melissa. We saw some of the uh, Christmas Eve service um, at Faith Community online. Anyway, Isaiah is the latest um, book that's been translated from the Passion Translation. And I will be reading from this for the next it's probably going to take me about two months to get through it because there's a little over 60 chapters in here, I think. And um, Brian Simmons and his team um, are translating the whole New Testament is done. You can get that. This is a really like, uh, the way to describe this is it's like the, the Father's Heart translation. That's how I can put it. And you will be very surprised if you haven't encountered the Passion Translation yet, how this will sweep you up into the heart of God like no other translation can even compare. So I wanted to show you this so you could get this if you wanted to. You can order it and you can be reading along or you can of course <laughs> just read along with me in the mornings. But for January and February that's what we're going to do. This morning we're in Revelation 20. I'm just gonna um, keep the camera on me. I don't have makeup on. Usually I don't put myself on camera like this, but that's fine. Okay, so we're in the thousand year reign. And it says, and I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a shorter time. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads 
before their hands, they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have been part, who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Hi, Glenn. So I just wanted to um, read from my notes the three different views on the millennium. The thousand year um, reign is referred to as the millennium. You guys probably already know this, but there's probably, and there's probably more views than this now, but um, when this Bible was released, they included <clears throat> these three views. There's the post-millennial view, the pre-millennial view, and the all-millennial view. And none of this <laughs> is meant to divide us. It's just meant for you to um, ask Holy Spirit uh, what's what you want to, you know, link into for your own interpretation of this. Um, Lots of people study, you know, this book a lot, and I, I have in the past, but um, I haven't really visited Revelation in a long time. Um, <clears throat> I know lots of churches take one stance or the other, but um, I know that the Lord's okay with us uh, choosing one of these or not, and um, it's not what we want to, like... Um, make our main focus is what I'm trying to say so it's not like the gospel it's not um, the things that we can't um, let uh, what am I trying to say <laughs> hmm. there's things that we believe that are the truth no matter what <laughs> and um, it's good not to be divided on those things but this stuff about the last days um, some of us like me <clears throat> aren't really as firm as I used to be on my position because I'm not sure <clears throat> but anyway post millennium looks for a literal 1000 year period of peace on earth ushered in by the church at the end of the thousand years, Satan will be unleashed once more, and then Christ will return to defeat him and reign forever. Christ's second coming will not occur until the thousand year period. And then premillennialism view, also views the thousand years as a literal time period, but holds that Christ's second coming in it initiates his thousand year reign and that this reign occurs before the final removal of Satan. Millennialism understands the thousand year period to be symbolic and not literal. And it's, they look at, people who take this view look at it as the time between Christ's ascension and his return, so that it already started symbolically when he died on the cross and was resurrected. Um, <clears throat> this is another way of re referring to the church age and this period will end with the second coming of Christ. Okay, so there you go. For whatever that's worth and whatever you want to ponder. All right, then Satan's doom starts in verse 7. Yay! When the second years, or I'm sorry, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. One sentence, all done. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever ever and ever and ever then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it earth and sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them and I saw the dead great and small standing before the throne and books were opened another book was opened which is the book of life 
The dead were judged according to what they had done as according in the books. It really matters what we do. It matters what we believe. It matters how we spend our days. There's, there's books in heaven. Things are being recorded. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead and were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. D-O-N-E. Done. Faith without works is dead. Okay, and then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Very sobering. That's the non-negotiable. That's the word I was trying to think of earlier. Thank you, Lord. That's, the, that's one of the non-negotiables the lake of fire, hell. There is a place called hell. There is a place that will be reserved for, it's actually meant for the enemy, for Satan and his angels, the fallen ones who, the third that left heaven on their own accord and rode out on their pride. Um, I guess, you know, um, it's, it's a yucky, bad thing that's happened that we can't afford to put uh, the lake of fire and Hades and hell the eternal torment into our um, talking to people and the gospel um, I'm not saying that that's something you greet a person with and I'm not saying that you lead a person to Jesus through fear or through fear of this through fear of torment, through fear of eternal damnation and all that stuff. But um, we can't leave it out. And that's what so much of the church is doing now. Um, this is a non-negotiable, just like eternity with Jesus is a non-negotiable. And everything is, you know, we read today and we're in chapter 20 of Revelation. <clears throat> Hi, Mary. Um, but if you... Um, if you read through here again, you're going to see it, that a lot of what this chapter is about is, uh, is what we do. And we do uh, things out of what we believe. Things are born in our heart, and uh, we can make good choices and bad choices. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize today that non negotiable. And with compassion, and mercy we approach people knowing that is in our hip pocket that we know that that's a non-negotiable that it is going to be a place that we don't want them to see so um, what will we do about that today right okay so um, again da, 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 we only have two more chapters and I got to go to work but we have two wonderful chapters to read, 21 and 22, and that will be Friday, which will be later in the day, because I won't be here tomorrow morning. If you want to pray for our family, we're headed to the airport to take my daughter um, for a week-long trip. Um, she'll be gone to the East Coast. Safe travels for her. I would appreciate that, and um, then also sometime during later in the day we'll visit 21, and then 22 we'll do Saturday. And then, as I was saying, we're going to hit the book of Isaiah, and that will be out of the Passion Translation. If you'd like to grab this copy off of Amazon, you can read along with us. There's notes in it, and I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. That'll be the next two months. January and February. Before January, we'll get started, actually. And I'll pray for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because <clears throat> that's a good thing to do. Look at, look at my dog. Jesus, thank you so much for blessing us today. 
everything we need for life and health and strength and godliness and beauty and we just carefully place our heart into your hands today we just see you as the master organizer and planner of of this place we call earth our home for this short time and then what you have awaiting for us as you lift us up into the heavenly some days just um, cannot thank you enough Lord as we read through this book of Revelation we just thank you God that you are sovereign you're in control that we need not be afraid and that we can trust you yeah it's good to see everyone I know I I knew you'd like that Glenn <laughs> thank you Melissa okay I got to get my guitar out it's time for lessons bye everybody